Jeff Gibbons here with another Cubase Basics tutorial. Send effects are short for auxiliary send effects, and they've existed for a long time, ever since engineers had big recording consoles with lots of tracks going through these things, and they all needed some way to access a reverb effect or other effects. Reverb was the most common one, and it still is the most common one. So the way it worked is they could send a portion of each track to this one device. So big studios didn't have to buy, if you had 48 tracks on your console, you didn't have to buy 48 separate reverb devices for the entire project. All you had to do is buy one reverb device and then use the console to send a portion of its track over to that reverb device. Having this ability, not only did it save you money when you purchased the reverb devices or not having to buy all these reverb devices, it also made your entire project have the same reverb device. You could then go over to the reverb device and change the size of the room and instantly every track that's outputting to this reverb device would sound like it's in a smaller room or a bigger room or whatever you want it to change. So why does this matter to us in the software world? Well, the truth is we don't need to use send effects and you could get away with using an insert effect on every single track with its own special reverb and sometimes we do that. But for the most part, when you're mixing, you want to place all of the tracks in your project in a certain space. And so send effects are the way we do that. And if we do that and we make one send effect available to the entire project, we can create a space that's unified. We can send a variable amount of each track to this reverb device so that you could have more reverb on perhaps the voice and less reverb on the drums. Uh, you could have less reverb on the main vocal and more reverb on the background vocals so they sound like they're farther away. These are all tricks that we use when we're mixing with reverb. And the benefit is you can then go change the size of that room for the entire project on one reverb device. So that's why we're still using send effects. And in Cubase, the way we do it is we go up to project, add track, effect. So in this little window, we need to choose the effect that we want. And I would say two of the most common things still used as a send effect today are reverb and delay. So we could go to the one of the reverbs that is available to us in Cubase. And I'm just gonna stick with the reverence one for now. And the configuration, I wanna keep the stereo because it gives us a stereo reverb. And then we don't need to worry about the rest, but let's go give this a name. So I'm gonna call this rev verb. And then I'm going to hit add track. So you can call it whatever you want. But once you do that, the reverb pops up. I'm just going to move this out of the way for a second. And when we go to our mixer or when we press the E button for any track, and over on the right hand side, we can see the sends. Under the sends, we click in this drop down menu and I can see the rev verb that I just made. And you won't see it show up here until you make an effect track under project add track effect. Next thing I need to do is turn the power button on and I can turn the slider up or down to choose how much of this overdrive kit I'm actually sending to the reverb. So what I need to do now is solo this track so I can hear the reverb. And let me just pull up the mixer so you can see what happens when I do that. So there's the mixer right here. And watch what happens when I press solo we can see that my overdrive kit is soloed. The output is soloed because we want to hear the output, but also this new purple track, this fader, this purple fader over here that says rev verb is also soloed. And this is what an effect track looks like in the mixer. So you can see that it shows up in the mixer almost like an audio track or an instrument track. But if we look up top, we can see that there is actually an insert effect on here. And that insert effect is the reverence that we chose initially when that dialog came up. You could go to this effect track here. I could press the E button for it. And you could add other effects on here to the reverb. So let's say you had a delay. You could actually put some kind of filter on that delay as well so that all of the delays would have some kind of crazy filter on it as the echoes are happening. But for now, you'd probably just want to keep it simple, keep the reverb on there and that's it. And this is also where you can go and make changes to the reverb itself. So you can hit the E button for the reverence, the reverb right there. 
and pop it up and change the preset if you want. And with this reverb called Reverence, this is Cubase's or Steinberg's version of a convolution reverb. So we can hit this browse button right here and I can go down to, I'm going to go down to, let's try the Japanese concert hall. This is probably one of my favorite reverbs in Reverence. And I can go back over to my drums for a second and I hit the E button for the drums and I can see that I've got a little bit of reverb going to the drums right now. So let's have a listen to this. Now as I move this up, more and more of the drums will go to that reverb. I like it right about there. Just a little bit of reverb on the drums. Really notice it on the, on the snare hits or whatever. And you'll really notice it on S's, on voice, if you have voice in your project. Uh, let's go to the drum pluck. And this is a groove agent kit that's taken from the Bouncy Vibrations pack that you can buy from Steinberg online. It's got some neat little sounds in it. So that could use some reverb, it could use some echo too, and we could uh, put some delay on it here as a send effect. Let's try some reverb on that, let's have a listen. So one thing you'll notice is if you didn't have any reverb on the track when you first soloed the track, and then you go add reverb just the way I've been showing you, you still won't hear anything. And that's because when you initially solo the track, Cubase knew not to solo this reverb effect track because it wasn't being accessed at the time. So now watch what happens if I take the solo off and put the solo back on. Now you see this reverb effect track is soloed. Let's have a listen to that. So let's put lots of reverb on that. I would normally go through and add reverb to the rest of the tracks, but let's not worry about that right now. But let's say I want to add one more track. Let's just add project add track effect and let's add a delay. So I'll go to the mono delay, keep things simple for right now. And we'll call this mono delay and add the track. And in here, I'll show you one of my favorite delay settings that everybody should know about when you're first getting into this stuff. And that's the dotted delay. So, so I'm going to put it on this track right here. So first thing, first, let's put our delay at a half note. And then I'm going to go to the E button for bass lead, go over to the send effect and Make sure that the mono delay that I just made is on and turned up. So let's turn it right up. There's half notes. Okay. Let's set it, set it to quarter notes. So there's quarter notes. And then let's set it to, um, you know, six, eighth notes. Now the fun one that you know, you should know about and don't have to use it every time, but uh, it's used very, very often and is very popular because of this rhythmic complexity that you add when you use this method is to use the eighth dotted or the 16th dotted. The T just means triplet. And what we want to try is this dotted one. So let's go to an eighth dotted. And then sometimes it'll be 16th dotted depending on the speed of your project. But in this case, I want eighth dotted. Instead of repeating the note every eighth note, it's going to repeat it every eighth note plus a half of an eighth note, which is a sixteenth note. So it's kind of like moving it over three sixteenths. Sometimes you'll see that on some delay settings. So let's have a listen to what it's doing. Ba, 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 ba. So that's what's happening when we use that. If, to get a little more technical, I could go in and look at this. So if I draw this in, just to show you visually what's happening, when I said it's like adding an eighth note plus a half an eighth note, here is an eighth note. So, right, because there's a quarter note right there. So this would be a quarter note. This is an eighth note. This is a sixteenth note. If I go back to eighth note for a second and add a half of an eighth note, that would just be one more sixteenth note. So now to see that in note form, let me just, let me just copy this up. And let's have a listen to that. So that's what's happening with this delay. It's going da, 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 da. Listen to it again. So that's the dotted note delay setting. I'll show you what it sounds like on this project. If we go over to 
uh, the drum pluck thing here. Hit the E button, go to the drop down, and go to mono delay, turn it on, and let's have a listen to that one. So it just adds some complexity to it in this really simple little little track there. If I go and do this to the drums, let's try a little bit. You know, it actually kind of works having it on a little bit, but this of course is just another trick uh, in your toolbox. So that is send effects. Now to talk very briefly about insert effects so you understand the difference between them. Insert effects are any effects that are inserted completely onto the signal path of your track. So that's pretty much everything else. So let me show you what I've done to these electric guitar tracks. Let me hit the E button right here and over on the left hand side we see inserts. So if I click the little drop down I can see all sorts of effects. I've got all of my effects in here and I am going to go for the distortion category because that's where I've got some of Cubase's amp simulators. And so the amp simulator makes it sound like my electric guitar here was plugged into an actual amp with a microphone on it. And all I did was record the microphone directly into the audio interface and it sounds, it sounds pretty weak without it. So let's have a listen to it. It's just clean electric guitar, no effects, no amp. Let me hit the E button for this. Go over to my insert side. I'm going to click the drop down menu right here and I'm going to click, oops, and I'm going to click distortion and I'm going to choose VST amp rack. So this VST amp rack is Steinberg's virtual amp rack and we can see we've got all sorts of things in here. We've got amplifiers, different amplifier imitations. We can sort of tell what they are based on by the look of them or the name. We've got cabinets, we've got post effects, all sorts of post effects. We've got microphones that we can choose to be on the amplifier itself. And then a couple of uh, routing things as well as some settings, including the tuner. Highly recommend using the tuner. Uh, the tuner is great. You've got a, a nice big tuner down here at the bottom. And uh, yeah, so you don't have to touch any of these if you're a little freaked out at first. You can click the little black area and you pull up the presets. So let's just try this first one in here, 60s in London. So if I press play, crank up the gain, crank up the bass, crank down the bass. Bright, make it brighter. crank up the gain the more distortion you have. We'll just leave it right there. This guitar track is now running right through that VST amp rack. The great thing about working with programs like this is that you can record your electric guitar dry and you can choose an amp, listen to it, work with it for as long as you want, come back a month later and decide you know what's too much distortion, change the amp entirely, change the effects entirely, and you don't have to re-record the electric guitar. So you just, you can plug your electric guitars, edit them, get them perfect, and then you can change the sound completely at any point. I love that feature and I use that all the time. So the last thing I will show you here in this video is just EQ and the EQ window is also in this channel setting. So you press that E, up pops the, the channel settings window and we've got this big thing right in the middle here that is our basic EQ that comes with Cubase. And this EQ is great, it sounds good, and it's extremely powerful. We see the frequency range from left to right which is 20 hertz all the way up to 20,000 hertz, the full range of human hearing. So 20 hertz being the lowest frequency, 20,000 hertz being the highest frequency. And then over on the left hand side we've got decibels. So zero decibels up to plus 24 and all the way down to minus 24. And so this is how we can boost fre specific frequencies 
by a certain amount of decibels. Left side, you've got filters. And we've got a high cut filter and a low cut filter. And so these would cut frequencies entirely. So if I go high cut filter and drag this down like this, watch what happens to the drums. Sometimes what we'll do is put a low cut filter on anything that doesn't need to have super low frequencies. So the low cut filter is often put on, especially on female vocals where you know there isn't gonna be any frequency content below like 50 or 60 hertz. Put a low cut on there, and if there's any plosives, those pop sounds that get really bassy on the microphone, you can put this filter on and it will get rid of those and you won't hear them in, uh, in the mix. So low cut filter is great on some things. You gotta be careful that you're not getting rid of important parts of the voice or instrument if you are putting it on, on a male voice or on instruments. But that's the low cut filter. Cuts all the frequencies past a certain point. So you can turn it on and off with this little power button right here. And then the next thing we've got is four available control points for EQ. And so the first thing you need to understand about this type of EQ is the curves. So you've either got a shelf, like this shelf right here, and I can click and drag up and you can see the shelf uh, starts boosting at a certain point and then goes all the way up to reaches that point and then stops there and continues all the way down to the left side or to the right side if it is a high shelf. Unlike a filter, you can just do this a little bit or a lot. A filter will do it entirely. So that's the difference between a, lo a low shelf and a low cut filter. So these are our two shelving EQs on either side. And you just click, drag, and have a listen. So let's see what happens if we give a general boost to the low frequencies and to the high frequencies on these drums. Or a cut. And I love how Cubase, several versions ago, came up with this visual of what is happening with the frequencies that you're listening to. So we can see all of the frequencies of this drum kit laid out right here. And you see those two different lines, one showing you where the frequencies were and one showing you where the frequencies are now after your change. Very cool feature. So those are the, the shelving EQs in a nutshell. There are some different versions of these shelving EQs. Don't worry too much about those. So let's have a look at the next type of EQ, which is this bell type EQ. And so if I click on there, we can see we've got parametric one or parametric two. And again, the default is parametric two. If I look at parametric one, it's got a slightly different slope. And the way a parametric EQ works is you have three controls. You have gain, frequency, and bandwidth or Q. And so we can see these three controls right underneath here. We've got gain right here showing how much we're boosting or cutting, so positive or negative. And then we've got the frequency itself is the next one, so where we are choosing the frequency. And then we've got the Q or bandwidth. And I can grab this little slider right here and make it either really narrow or really wide. So really narrow is 12 and really wide is zero. So let's take it back somewhere in the middle and by the way, if you hold shift and click on this little control point and then drag down, you can play with this, the Q value without actually touching this slider. So shift and that changes the Q value. Uh, Q stands for quality factor, by the way. Um, anyways, so if I hold shift, drag this up, now let's have a listen and see what this is doing. Oops. So that's very basic EQ settings as well for you, but also very important. So have a look at the EQ, try it out. Understanding where to put EQ on is a tough thing because there's no right answer for it. You know, it's, it's up to you. But there are times where things just need more bass or less bass or a boost in the high frequencies. The other thing I like about this is you can see the, the notes. So I can see that this is a, a B, this is a C sharp one, this is an E, you know, at 83 hertz, this is an E. If I go all the way down to 40 hertz, that's the low E on a bass guitar, right? So I know that I can boost that frequency 
in the song. So, or maybe you have a problem where the E in your bass track, in the, you're in the key of E, it's sticking out, is resonating way too loud in comparison to everything else. We'll just go and turn down that one note, and now whenever that bass synth gets to, or bass guitar gets to that note, it gets reduced in level. So those three things, send effects, insert effects, and EQ, are song production essentials. Having some grasp over those things and knowing the basics of them is very important and I highly recommend trying these things out on your, your songs. Put a reverb on your project, try using some of the send effects, and then go and check out the EQ and see what happens if you start playing around with the EQ. Maybe you make your piano track a little less bright and you make your guitar track a little less bassy and maybe those two tracks fit together a little bit better. They don't, might not sound as good on their own, but put together, you're now giving each instrument a bit of a niche. So things like that are how you want to start playing around with and understanding EQ. So I hope that was helpful for you. Hit the subscribe button for more videos in the future, and thanks for watching.